thank you for coming and a warm, warm welcome to all of you. It's really a pleasure to be here and see you all and to be with you. And the lecture will be maybe about an hour. And I really expect healings today during the lecture. And I think you all had heard of Jesus and the healings that he accomplished and which are described in the Bible. And one of the things that always has most fascinated me is how he, despite of all storms around him, remained in a state of inner peace and serenity. And this state of inner peace and serenity enabled him to master each and every situation, even the crucifixion and the events that led to his resurrection. And today, I would like to show you that this inner peace and serenity is a result of getting close to God and how you too can experience this regardless of whatever seems to be happening or how difficult a situation appears to be. The Christianity that Jesus demonstrated is based on a joyful message, the good news, the gospel, that basically states that even when things appear to be stormy or rocky, right then there's a spiritual reality. And this spiritual reality in which only divine peace with all of its forms of beauty reigns is available to each one of us. Mary Baker Eddy, the discoverer and founder of Christian Science, wrote this in her textbook, Science and Health, with Key to the Scriptures. And this book looks like this today. There are different formats and designs. And she wrote, it's on page 14 in the chapter Prayer, Christians rejoice in secret beauty and bounty hidden from the world but known to God. I really love this one. And also in the Bible we read, when Jesus was on a boat with his disciples, he slept, but a great storm of wind arose and the waves beat into the ship so that the ship was full of water. And they awoke him and asked him if he was not afraid they would all perish. But he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. So the Bible says that when Jesus stilled the storm, there was a great calm. Can you imagine such a feeling of calm? Or have you ever experienced such stillness? And this stillness is more than just the absence of noise and stress. In this stillness, one can feel the power, strength, and intelligence that is the backbone of the entire universe. It is a stillness of God's presence, the presence of truth, love, and principle. And one can feel the closeness of God, love, which is independent of a material way of thinking and is under the realm of God, Spirit, who preserves everything. Such deep perspective brings immediate healing. How was Jesus able to accomplish this? How could he remain calm and at peace despite all the tempests and storms around him? In the Bible we read, how Jesus acted fearlessly and didn't take into account the physical aspect of things. In other words, he turned away from the corporal sense of body that says that you perceive everything in a physical way. By turning away from it, he found the dominion of spirit. And Jesus was always aware of his oneness with God, love, 
spirit. You see, it's the same, this is one of my favorite signs. It's like, you know, the sun and its rays. See, we all connected like the sun and its rays. We all belong together in this way, if we love it or not. See, and the problems are here. This is the whole blah, blah, what you hear the whole day, the storm. And we say, no, and 100 times yes. This is always our way, not in this way. OK? So this, was, this is what gave Jesus dominion over seemingly difficult situations. This oneness with God, this unity with God, was the Christ, the true idea of God and man. Jesus was always one with the Christ. In Christian science, we understand Christ as the spirit which Jesus implied in his own statements, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I and my Father are one. You see? This oneness, like the sun and its rays, it's always there. You all have always this connection. And this Christ, or divinity, of the man Jesus was his divine nature. And his approach, as well as his experiences, were totally spiritual and provided him with spiritual power over what appears to be matter. Through his life and demonstration of the power of God, love, Jesus was able to show us the power of the Christ. And in 1866, Mary Baker Eddy discovered the laws that were behind, or rather, that supported these healings. And these divine rules also make clear how spiritual power can be cultivated through being conscious of man's nearness to God. And Mary Baker Eddy looked at these divine precepts as laws, which are explained in Christian science. And she explained them in her textbook, Science and Health for Everyone to Understand. And Mary Baker Eddy wrote about the essence of Christian science on page 454, line 29. The superiority of spiritual power over sensuous is the central point of Christian science. So how can we experience this superior spiritual power? God dwells, as Jesus stated, in his kingdom, the kingdom of God. And this is spiritual. It is not a part of what appears to be the sensuous world. For instance, he said, God is spirit, so God can only be worshipped and found in spirit and truth. Where is this realm of God and how can we find it? Christ Jesus elucidated where the kingdom of God is found when he said, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you, with everyone, outside or inside here, no problem. So we don't find God in the outer world, but in the inner spiritual world, not in a building, but in our consciousness. The Bible clarifies such innermost experience. In the book of Psalms, for instance, we find rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And also truly my soul waits upon God, from him comes my salvation. And how doth this help come to you? The entire world of the physical senses with confusion and unappealing symptoms of inharmony remains, so to say, on the outside of the door that leads to the spiritual stillness of the divine realm. 
The problems of the world cannot enter there. They lose their reality in the presence of God. In the stillness of God's presence, only the divine reality exists. When we understand this, it has a practical impact in our own experiences. So naturally, the question follows, how can I come into the healing presence of God? Should I leave it up to chance or perhaps seek out a traditional church as quickly as possible? By all means, we have to take the initiative. We need to have the desire to, of being close to God when we want to experience his present dominion. This is, for instance, shown in, the, in this Bible passage, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. You see, it's always, always this way. It's always the same. So how do we draw closer to God, to the Son, to love, to spirit? Jesus spoke about praying and that in order to do this, we need to go into the closet. Jesus prayed a lot. We are told about this in the New Testament. Often he went into the stillness of the desert to pray. As stated in the Gospel of Matthew, when thou prayest, enter into the closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. Maybe you heard about this. But we have to do it to practical, you see? We don't pray the whole night on a bed like this. We are praying like this. We give our consent that everything is possible, that we are complete. But you have to shut the door, no. So what happens in this stillness becomes evident. It comes into being as a reality that you can experience. Mary Baker Eddy wrote about this way of prayer in Science and Health. So the book starts with the chapter prayer, and this is on page 15. It's re a really important page. And this, there's a whole treatment. It starts on line 14. In order to pray aright, we must enter into the closet and shut the door. Maybe that's easy. We must close the lips and silence the material senses. In the quiet sanctuary of earnest longings, we must deny sin and plead God's honors. We must resolve to take up the cross and go forth with honest hearts to work and watch for wisdom, truth, and love. So you don't need a big cross and walk through purse, but this cross is that you never ever discuss with all the opinions and the whole blah blah what is coming here. You really have to say no and hundred times yes. You see, your honest desire to know more about your spiritual identity because it is there. Yeah, but no and yes. So isn't it obvious that this image of the closet requires that we turn prayerfully toward the stillness of God. Undoubtedly, the term closet that Jesus used is figurative and is understood from a spiritual standpoint. It, is, it does not mean a physical room. Closet symbolizes a spiritual temple, or as stated in Science and Health, the closet typifies the sanctuary spirit, the door of which shuts off sinful sense but lets in truth 
life and love. Choose life and love are synonyms for God. You could also say that a sanctuary is a place filled with the atmosphere of God and is untouched by what goes on outside, not subject to the influence of the world. A sanctuary offers protection and safety. So we discern that this sanctuary of spirit is a spiritual location, so to speak, and that means the kingdom of God. So when we go into the closet, we open ourselves to the influence of the Christ and find ourselves under his divine protection. Like the Lord's Prayer, which starts with, Our Father, which art in heaven. And in Science and Health, we find a wonderful definition of heaven. It's on 587. Harmony the reign of spirit, government by divine principle, spirituality, bliss, the atmosphere of soul. In prayer, we place ourselves under the law of God, which means that we enter his realm. And his kingdom only, that which bears his name, has authority, which means whatever is in agreement with God, spirit, love. In order to gain a clear idea of what heaven means, let's go to science and health and look at the sentence, heaven is not a locality, but a divine state of mind. And as I mentioned before in prayer, we turn to an inner or spiritual world at any time and under any circumstances, we don't need a special locality. Let me show this through the experience of a friend of mine. My friend had been studying Christian science for many, many years, and he had learned to go consciously into the stillness of God to experience help and get answers in the nearness of God. On one occasion, he was able to turn persistently from difficult symptoms and go into his spiritual world of peace, which, which brought him healing. And this is his report in his own words about what happened. Some weeks ago, I had extremely strong pains in my stomach. After the initial reaction, I was afraid that I was bleeding internally. In spite of the pain, I refused to accept negative thoughts and turn to the daily prayer by Mary Baker Eddy so that I could consciously draw as close to God as possible to establish in thought my perfect spiritual identity and maintain this state of thought. The prayer is like this. Thy kingdom come. Let the reign of divine truth, life and love be established in me and rule out of me all sin. And may thy word enrich the affection of all mankind and govern them. He wrote, I was completely conscious that I should allow only those ideas to enter into my thinking until I was able to regain an inner calm and peace, despite the picture that I was not doing well. I further reasoned that a kingdom is normally based on laws, and that the kingdom of God naturally is based on divine laws. And I was part of these laws which maintained and governed me. And this knowledge of God's laws gives us dominion. They correct and govern us and restore harmony. This law is in the stillness of God, and this is the only effective law that meets our need. There could be either inharmony or nor destructive elements in the law of dominion, the divine law of love. 
the divine law of God is u universal and eternal. Everyone is included in this divine law. In my prayer, I have fully directed my thoughts toward drawing close to God and the efficacy of his laws. My friend understood that to establish the dominion of truth and love as a daily prayer started means to consciously accept that the divine law has authority and is present right here and now. Even though the pain seemed to demand much attention, he was able to handle fear through complete trust that God is able to handle each and every situation. A feeling of safety and love for God and his fellow human beings totally engulfed him. He went on to write, I also asked a Christian science practitioner to support me so that I could feel my closeness to God even deeper and get rid of all fear. The practitioner agreed to pray with me and remind me of the comforting and helpful passage in the 23rd Psalm with a spiritual interpretation found in Science and Health. By substituting for the corporal sense the incorporeal or spiritual sense of deity. By bringing this to my attention, we prayed together. And this is a really wonderful passage here in this book, which on 578, and we prayed this together. Divine love is my shepherd, I shall not want. Love makes me to lie down in green pastures. Love leadeth me beside the still waters. Love restores my soul, spiritual sense. Love leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for love is with me. Love's rod and love's staff, they comfort me. Love prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Love anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house, the consciousness of love forever. That's really good. And that really helped me, touched me, and I felt much better. I began to be aware of my closeness to love, God, and understand and feel more and more my oneness with him. I only wanted to express goodness, the divine love, and grew into a deeper understanding that I was the reflection of God, love, spirit. As I prayed this way, I discovered that I had a loud, serious voice to come into my thought and that I felt excessively responsible for many things, for my wife, our children, my parents, my employees and my company, my church, and so on. I knew that what I could do, wanted to do, and must do, and was to let go of those feelings and to know that God is in control. So I continued praying for myself. I studied again and again the 23rd Psalm from Science and Health until I had an inner sense of protection as well as a feeling of being cared for so that all my worries were swept out of my consciousness. The practitioner advises me also to look at Science and Health, page 475, and put my name into it where it says man. What is man? Man is not matter. He is not made up of brain, blood, bones, and other material elements. Man is spiritual and perfect. Man is the idea, the image of love. He is not physique. 
This was it. At that moment, I became fully aware of these truths. It was a thrilling feeling to be so close to God, and I could only feel inner peace. So it was no longer a question that something was not in order. Instead, it was a great pleasure to realize that everything was in order. At that point, I had a strong desire to exercise, and so I played tennis for about one and a half hour. I was truly healed, and the inner peace that was now a part of me is still with me today. So it's not only to heal a physical problem. In every healing, you will get this little glimpse. You see the still, small voice. You feel this love, the presence of the Christ, and you understand your spiritual identity, what is, which is always perfect and complete. And you see, when we pray in stillness and quiet and turn wholly to God, love, we are able to fight against all destructive influences that the material world resistance would like to present. We are able to prove the opposite by feeling at peace with God. But you really have to say no. Not only no, because the arguments and the opinions are very, very aggressive often. And you understand this more and more, your spiritual identity, and then you can say really no, and hundred times yes. This is our prayer. It's very simple. My friend maintained continuously, consciously, and persistently in thought his close relationship to God. The books written by Mary Baker Eddy helped him to realize this. In proportion, as we acknowledge that divinity is reality, we let go of the mortal or material meaning of existence so healing can take place because the spiritual knowledge replaces the erroneous assumption that life is separate from God. As a matter of fact, the physical problems that seem to be so aggressive and the fear that resulted from feeling totally responsible for everything that happened was lifted when my friend responded to the stillness, stillness of God's presence. So you too can learn through Christian science how this scientific prayer can help you to recognize, like Jesus did, the Christ, the true idea about each and every person and that perfect spiritual creation can be known. So through this, healing takes place. And Christian science is a science that brings the Christ into each occasion where it is needed. So the background of this can be clearly seen when we understand what Paul meant when he said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So our perceptions are transformed under the influence of the Christ. As I said before, Christ is seen in Christian science as a true idea of God, the divine influence always present in human consciousness. And Jesus explained it. He showed mankind how this influence is acting to bless and heal. Mary Baker Eddy discovered this influence of the Christ when she had healing from a severe accident in 1866. That was the occasion when she gained this new perception. And Science and Health was first published in 1875. It is a textbook of Christian science 
where she explains completely the inspiration and revelation that came to her at that moment when she was healed. She described it in a logical and reasonable manner how you can also experience the presence of Christ and his liberating effect of your life. Mary Baker Eddy lived from 1821 to 1910 in the United States and was one of the most known personalities at the beginning of the 20th century in the United States. Since very early in her childhood, she felt a great nearness to God and also to study the Bible. Through the healing that she experienced in 1866, she became more and more aware of the ongoing healing and presence of God right here and then. She was able to comprehend through this experience that this was based on law, not just simple belief. This is quite different. And to this law, she gave the name of Christian science, the divine laws of truth, life, and love. And after that profound experience, she consistently felt the presence of the Christ and closeness to God, and this enabled her to heal herself and others instantaneously. Mary Baker Eddy expected her students to heal as she did, completely and quickly. Once she asked her pupils, why do you give long treatments? Because you don't give them on the right side. It is the power of the living God we want. If the voice of God were heard, all would be healed. You are so buried in the life of the senses. That's what makes long treatments. So, you know, we really have to listen. Because God is talking with us 24-7 about perfection, about love, about the law, about your life. Are you really listen? Or are you listen more to these blah, blah, blah? Or are you checking in the morning first your emails? Or about your perfection? You see, what is influencing you? I know it's not so easy, but you can try. So despite many challenges, she remained faithful to her chosen course in order to make Christian science accessible for everyone. And in her book, Michelinie's Writings, she wrote on page 133, in the midst of depressing care and labor, I turn constantly to divine love for guidance and find rest. I really love this one. In the midst of depressing care and labor, I turn constantly to divine love for guidance and find rest. It offers me great joy to be able to attest to the truth of Jesus' words. Love makes all burdens light. It gives the peace that passes understanding and with signs following, as to the peace, it is unuterable. When questions as to whether she believed in God, Mary Baker Eddy answered, he sustains my individuality, nay, more, he is my individuality and my life. Because he lives, I live. Like the sun and its rays, you see, there's always this connection. And you have a lot of sun here in Australia. Maybe it reminds you sometimes. It's hard for us sometimes in North Germany, so. The life of Mary Baker Eddy is very instructive and inspiring, so I can keenly recommend that you read one of her biographies. Since I have come to know Christian science, I experienced healings and an inner feeling of utmost closeness to God 
and being in God's presence. So, you know, I don't have to think about all these things anymore. It's so natural. It's so normal. It's not so far away. It's not in another universe or another planet. It's always here where I am. I'm always one with God and you are one with God and we are all one with love. That's so helpful. It's not out there. I don't need a practitioner. But it's good to have sometimes one. My wife is one, so it's very helpful. So many situations in which I previously would have been very afraid and would have react in shock, I can now handle in a very different way since I learned to feel and maintain the awareness of being close to God. And we are living in the moment for two weeks in Fremantle in a very nice studio with two little, two little ponds and with a little, little bridge. And yesterday, my wife was lying on this little bridge in the sun. And two hours later, we watched to this bridge and there was a brown big snake. Yes. But we were not afraid. <laughs> we called the snake man. Maybe he's coming tomorrow, I don't know. But I really feel not afraid, you see. Um, it's a friend. It's an idea. It's not dangerous. We think always it's dangerous. Everything is dangerous and I have to pre protect. But this is the way also of the snake. It's an idea. I know. We learned so many other things. But this was a really good exercise for us. Huh? So I'm so grateful for the lady who gave me Science and Health 18 years ago. Yeah. And today she is my wife, also a good friend, also a practitioner, and also a lecturer. And I'm very grateful that we can have this book and the accessibility and availability to these laws for everyone. We are all constantly faced with situations in which we have to make a choice and we naturally want to make the right decision. This brings to mind a beautiful sentence that I heard recently, but I don't know the source but the ideas are good. It goes like this. The burden of a decision isn't attached to me. If nothing but divine love touches my heart today, then nothing I do can go wrong. When God's love touches our hearts, at the same time we feel the presence of God and receive the divine message that can guide us to make the right choice. I remember that the word gospel in the Bible means also good tidings or as we say today, good news. What kind of message is this anyway? A Bible dictionary has an interesting explanation. The gospel is more than merely an announcement or proclamation. It is the power of God. Through it, the gospel works its way into people's lives, enabling them to encounter the elevated Christ. So good news, or in a general sense, the divine message is a power coming from God, and it works to transform our lives. Are you willing to transform? This is a question. So you have to say yes. And to the rest, no. You see? It's always the same. No and yes. It's very easy. I know sometimes it's hard. But we work together. The divine message, after all, has a heavenly, not an earthly nature and origin. 
Sometimes people think that God only manifests himself on special occasions and then only in some ceremony. But the Bible teaches us that God imparts himself to us not in rituals or through the noise of the senses, but as a still small voice, a still small voice. God speaks constantly to us in our thoughts, even in our everyday lives. Just now, are you listen or are you listen to me? It's gentle that you are listen to me and polite, but let us listen in this way. Let me share an experience that I once had, which will show you how I was led to make the right choice. Once when my wife and I were looking for a new home and an office for our practice, we stood in front of the door of the apartment we wanted to rent in order to meet the owner. As I had made initial contact with the rental agency, I told my wife a few minutes before the meeting that the name of the owner was called Mr. X. She was rather appalled and asked me to say again what his name was. I repeated that his name was Mr. X. Her first reaction was that. Oh no, I don't want anything to do with him. Let's get out of here. She then told me that she had briefly known the owner before and that he had always been rather dominant, vain and unpleasant. She went on to say that he was only interested in whatever profit he could get. As we are both Christian science practitioners, we let go of this human impulse and immediately decided to not accept this aggressive thought. We both knew that God had guided us there and that we would make the right decision. We wanted to follow God and not be limited of by human judgments. We consciously turned to God to hear his message so that we could quickly experience inner peace. Additionally, we turned to the ninth commandment in the Bible that says, thou shalt not be a false witness against thy neighbor. I know it's not so easy sometimes because you hear no, hear, see, and so on. No and yes. There is always the perfect image and likeness. Doesn't this commandment point out to man's true nature, be it hidden or not? We should never allow in our thought that man could be robbed of his true spiritual nature as the image and likeness, or child of God, as the Bible says. No matter what claims human, mortal opinion may make, it does not have the power to adulterate divine creation. While we were still discussing this, the owner arrived and parked his old, broken down bicycle in the corner. This was hardly the conceited businessman that we imagined. He was dressed rather casually and looked at us. He was friendly, looked at my wife and said, didn't we meet before through a common friend? We looked at the rooms and they seemed perfect for our needs. And I felt an inner feeling that this was right. So I said, we want to rent this apartment. Then my wife, was, who was rather amazed, gave her consent as well, and so did the owner, so we rented their rooms, these rooms. In the Christian Science textbook, we find the statement, with one mind, and that God, or good, the brotherhood of man would consist of love and truth, and have unity of principle and spiritual power. Everything worked out as it was supposed to, in the right way. The owner was kind and we arrived at a comfortable agreement regarding the price of the rental. He even offered us two months rent free 
for renovations. He had the whole house painted right after we moved in and the tenants below us laid out a new garden where for years there had been only rubble, trash and cinders. And so we also get a lovely view from our new balcony. We are rather pleased with these rooms and have a good relationship with the owner and sometimes even our dogs place in the garden. The behavior of the owner was completely changed in comparison to how he was before. But we don't pray for a good result, you see, or we don't influence him. We only know that he is also a perfect, wonderful child of God. Stop. At the same time, I got in touch with the owner of where we were living and gave him notice on when we want to move out. He said he would try to rent our rooms as quickly as possible and that was on the 1st of September and he told us that the six months notice would free us from the contract on April 1st of the next year if another tenant couldn't be found. And he didn't have much hope that a tenant couldn't be found within two months because the winter season would start. And that would mean that we would be paying rent for a while on two places. Time moved on and we had plenty to do to renovate the new rooms. But, now, but no new tenant was in sight and our owner began to worry and to communicate his worry to me. Always to me. I was always in contact with them. Ulrike was always free. Maybe it was my job, I don't know. So there were two weeks left and we needed to start the renovation of our place to leave them ready for a new tenant. But an inner voice told both of us that everything happened naturally. God's idea surrounded us always and supply us with all good. It really was a time of being steadfast and persevering in knowing what was the divine, harmonious truth for turning everything over to God, not arguing with a decision or formulating emergency measures. On the last day of October, the last day before we had to start paying rent on two places, I got a call from the owner who happily and totally astonished told me that he had that day found a tenant who had already signed the contract beginning the next day on November 1st. On the top of that, it wasn't necessary for us to renovate the rooms. That solution was truly through a divine influence. It was just infinitely, I was just infinitely grateful for this proof of divine guidance and love. You see, but we not prayed for a good result. We give everything in God's hands and listen and following that he will supply and arrange everything in the right way. I know it's not so easy sometimes, huh? When this coming, all these arguments? No and yes. Now what, what can we learn from this experience? We must follow divine directives exactly as they are. They don't demand anything that is impossible but only what we can certainly fulfill. A deeper understanding of God's being unfold this ability. Studying the Bible and the Christian science textbook along with prayer, of course, help us there. As the, ba the Bible tells us, for it is God that works in you both to will and to do of his good guidance and pleasure. A selfless impulse, a loving, helpful thought, or even a liberating idea that comes to us from God 
all these expand our abilities if we follow without hesitation. God's message always brings progress and they have the transforming power of the Christ. In order to truly grasp this, we must deeply open up and be ready to receive our transformation. This is natural, even if it seems to be rather difficult. People often ask, but how can we recognize a divine commandment in the first place? Deep in our hearts, in our purest feelings, we know very well whether it is God speaking to us or only human will. What does the Bible say? Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Of course, you know the request from the letters of Peter, Cast on him all of your worries, as he will care for you. But we have to do this, you see, and not to have all our rucksacks, and then we discuss with God. You see, that's not possible. It's so much more freedom then, you see. No opinions. What better thing can we do than to follow in God's stillness. So before we end, let me share an experience that recently took place in this way. We have a small garden house which has a kitchen and bathroom in Hamburg, in Germany. In the winter, we turn off the water to prevent the pipes from freezing, which could lead to flooding. I know it's not possible here, but it's normal in North Germany. So in March, I turned the water back on so that the water could run. I didn't notice the problem, so I drove back home. Suddenly, I received a call while I was driving. A neighbor of my garden house, also a Christian scientist, had called me and let me know that my garden house was flooded. With perfect calm, I let him know that I would return there and take a look at it. Deep down in my thought, I maintained my peace with God and thanked him for taking care of all worrying thoughts that would try to challenge my oneness with him. I came back to my garden house and saw that my friend, who also had a key to my house, had already cleaned and dried out the house. It wasn't as bad as he had originally said that it was, he told me. However, if I had not come by my house, then you would have a, as an I have a massive flood by morning, he told me. A pipe had a small rip in it and water would have continued to turn all over the house. Then I asked him, why did you decide to go into my garden house? You knew that I wasn't there. He told me that when he came home, he had a rather strong feeling that he should go to my house and open the door to see that everything was all right. Then he told me, that you know that I have learned to follow divine messages when they come to me. Naturally, I was more than happy about this, that he was obedient to follow the divine message. Let me conclude by sharing with you that you can all find a deep inner peace and tranquility regardless of whatever adverse situations appear to crop up. Through applying Christian science, you can gain a profound closeness to God and continuously receive divine messages. But as we discussed, you have to listen and then following obediently. Christ Jesus 
left out this saying, I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Isn't that the Christ message, the healing power in the life of all humanity, which can even change the world? Thank you for your attention. It's the end.